Yes, guys, welcome back to the Canon Podcast. Today it is just myself and George. Uh, Babs can't be here, unfortunately, because he has a watery eye. <laughs> he just saw the football and he just teared a bit. Just, just, just a bit. Just one tear. Wasn't much. Just, you know, a single tear that dropped down his cheek. And it was just Arsenal, the best team in the world. And that's the last thing he said. The standards are on the floor, guys. <laughs> the standards. To be fair, to be fair, George, he did do 15 minutes in the instant reaction, which, you know, it, it's, it's, it's More taxing. Than what I did. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we wish Babs a, a speedy recovery. Um, George, how are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I'm actually very good. You know, I think that um, I had a chance to really rewatch the game in peace without kind of the, the, the emotionality of it and like the timeline influence. And I thought um, that first half, mate, was probably some of the best I've seen Arsenal play this season, period. Uh, and so it, it gets me excited. I, I do want to bring up some stuff that we thought about. You know, in the winter break, I remember here on the channel us talking about when we should peak, that fitness concern, and maybe the idea that Arsenal have um, purposefully done this, like this manner for control versus fitness, and when do mm. when do teams need to peak? Because I'll be honest, mate, I've been seeing this a lot lately. Arsenal start quick, and when they start quick and they go ahead, they rarely um, lose the game, and so. That, that absolutely could be something uh, that we're looking to turn on more later in the I, season. I'd love to see the numbers on that because I bet I bet you're right. I, I would love to know how many times once we go ahead, how many times the team peg us back because that, yeah. that that really feels like it's a, it's a big big quality of ours. Yeah, it was an unbelievable weekend. I hope everyone um, uh, listening has had, has had the time to sort of celebrate it properly before we sort of dive into it. Um, yeah, I'm just always keen. You know, football is so... It's so up and down. There's so many good moments. There's so many bad moments. You know, we, in 10 years time, we might be looking back at this and saying, oh, you know, that was the prefix to a great period. Or we might be saying that was the good times. I don't know. So I always think whenever we have a good result, you might be saying, you know, oh, well, this wasn't right. Or that wasn't right. Or we need to improve on this, improve on that. But so I'm always keen to just be like, is... <laughs> <laughs> we, we should, yeah, give everyone a lifetime contract, the standards, <laughs> let, let them slip. Um, but yeah, no, I hope everyone really enjoyed that because it was, yeah, it was, it was really, really special and, and appreciate you guys being with us to chat it through. Um, yeah, I want to start on, um, on, on, on that first half, because as you say, mm -hmm. it was possibly, uh, I, I mean, you said it was the best you've seen Arsenal play this season. I'd argue it's some of the best football we played in the project. Like, you know, if Ooh. we're talking about, you know, performances, you know, you think back to them, maybe that Man City game on the, on the opening day of the of 2022. You think back to certain performances last season, but that that game felt really, really special. And I want to start here. One of the big things that I feel so positive about, about this team is the fact that it feels like every single aspect of play we're dominating it's not just the fact that we're let's say playing really well we look a little bit vulnerable on this thing but we're playing really well in open play or it's not just that you know we're, we're, we're getting over the line with a, a couple of individual moments or whatever we look a little bit shaky but you know thank god every single moment every single phase whether it's you know, baiting the press, whether it's the counter press, whether it's um, the Throw. finding people between the set lines, piece. whether it's throw-ins, whether it's set pieces. It feels like right now we're playing at the kind of manifestation of all of those marginal marginal gains that we've talked about. You know, and we've seen from Arteta talking about all these little marginal gains. That's what I love. You know, like going, you know, we, we, talk, we joke about moments like signing win or whatever, but mm. the togetherness, you know, the, the, all those little things, putting the TFOs out, putting the, you know, getting that artist to do that, that thing pre-match and, you know, giving Gabriella's player of the month, all, just all these little things add up to something so, so special. So yeah, I mean, reflections on that first half, because I just thought we were, we were extraordinary. Uh, the word that I saw like just spring to mind was suffocating. It was a period where I just felt dominance, this... George, maybe. <laughs> I don't know quite there, but um, it, it was just, it was, it was, it really was suffocating. I felt like there was a period where is this going to drop off? Is this going to tail off after we've seen Arsenal do this for 10, 15 minutes? Like it's not been something that we haven't seen as a fan base, but again, even throughout Mikel Arteta's tenure, I would say that, not just the intensity, but also the line would drop. There would be certain things that the players allowed themselves to fall into, whether that's mm. fear, whether that's them being complacent. And it just felt like everybody to a man 
was um, pulling in that same direction. They were all not letting them uh, let loose of the very high standards that I think they're setting on themselves recently. Where I, I, I like what the team is saying, and I don't, and I don't think that that should go under the under the under the carpet in a sense. Where you're looking at Bakayo Saka's reaction to finishing, you're looking at Martin Odegaard's. Uh, comments and quotes about you know really we haven't done anything yet and there's this there is this icy cool composure about the team and you know we're going to freak out about the play because I do want to get into some of the tactics because it was brilliant and our man-to-man press in general but when I see a half like that mate I can't not help but want to project to see that every match. Mm -hmm. And I start to analyze what's different, who's there. Why is the team able to sustain this level of performance more than we've seen in really any other match? And I think some of that has to come with experience. I don't use it enough, but I do think that we keep talking how young this team is, but mate, at some point it's going to click for these guys. It's going to click where they recognize that they're the superstars that we project them out to be. And, you know, this whole debate about, you know, we've even had with the Bukayo Saka thing with Jamie Carragher and, of course, what we've done here, that's going to be the case for multiple players coming mm-hmm. through the line. And I think, you know, part of the reason that we recruited so young and part of the reason and hoping at least that the squad would um, peak together was for this. And I'm starting to see signs where I think there's multiple players that are playing the best in the world, the best in their position, and it's coming at the perfect time. Now, can we introduce some of our injured players? Because that bench looked a little bit frightening in terms of the the defenders on on show. And, you know, of course, we know that everything isn't perfect. We could still do better about complementing our wingers and making sure that our superstars feel a little bit better platformed. But all that stuff aside, you look at that first half and you look at a team that was mature, that believe they belong on that stage. And, you know, it felt very Champions League in terms of what Arsenal did, in terms of what they tried to prep for it, in terms Saturday of... Saturday night under the lights. Yeah, and just the importance that the club placed on it. And the reason I'm really happy about this is maybe the opposition wasn't the level that you want to attribute that game to. But the players didn't care. They didn't let the occasion get to them. It was very, It was very simple for them to let the fire, the lights, everything get to them and start slow. We've seen it. We've seen this team unable to match up to the energy at times um, in the past. But here it was just, there was just a different level of, yeah, I belong. And it was that nonchalant way that they kept producing. They kept, um, you know, letting their football do the talking, mate. They respected the fundamentals of the game. And I look at Martinelli as somebody who, for me, has gone under a lot of uh, criticism last couple of weeks. But I look at his performance in this match. I don't know if people noticed how much ground he was covering and um, the job he did making sure to create a plus one in different parts of the pitch, whether that was on the right, on the left, through the middle, in the middle. Um, he was brilliant on the night. And I don't think I saw enough praise on the timeline for it. And that is all that matters. What Twitter thinks. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I agree. I agree. I think um, I want to pick up on a few th- few things you said there, specifically around maturity, because we talk a lot, of course, about, you know, this is a young team and, you know, when will this team mature and peak and, you know, are they going to, can, can they mature together or anything? I think individually there is a... Um, there is, of course, places to go. You know, there are. I think you could pick out any individual and say, I think there's a there's a, a maturity individually, maybe in their actions at times, where which could be improved, or just an improvement in terms of their, their technical level or physical level or wh- whatever it might be. But as a team, specifically in the way we've approached this season, with how adaptable we've been, you know, pick out any game. I was talking about this earlier. Pick out any game we've played and adapted slightly differently. We've gone, you know, is it, you know, whether it was Man United at home where we sat off a little bit more, as frustrating as it was for me to watch and and asked them to play into our hands and got the result. Whether we went away to Everton, Goodison Park and went toe-to-toe physically with them in a different way. Whether it was, you know, um, I don't know, going, you know, pick out any game you want in the season. There's a different aspect of us that's being that's that's being asked questions and we're answering them. And I think individually, maybe the maturity isn't there, but physically, mentally and technically as a team, 
I'm feeling that maturation happen in front of our eyes. I'm feeling the maturity of the team understand what Arteta wants, understand, okay, this this game needs this because, and I want to come to, to something specific on the game now, the counter press. To go out and do that, I've, I've seen numbers that are like, you know, that was the most regains after five seconds in, you know, Arsenal's last 10 years or whatever. You can, you can pull out any stats you want, but we all saw what happened. When you look at how we press, and I'd love you to talk about it to, from a sort of tactical, technical perspective, but just from the physical perspective, to go and do that, having most of those players just started four games in 13 days after a long season, knowing that there's a big title race ahead of them, to go out and do that, you know, and 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 get that done and and go at the intensity that we we did on the night is so, so impressive. And it shows a level of dedication and focus that I think we're beginning to see from a mentally mature and physically mature and technically mature team that understands this game demands this. So let's do that. Next game will demand something else. So let's worry about that then. But right now we need this and we went at it 100%. And if you look at the field tilt, <laughs> as I do, there is a, you know, a very good evidence that, that that really works out for us. So yeah, I, I'd love I'd love you to talk about the, the, the counter press in a second. But just before I come back to you, I also want to make the point around some of these players, I always think it's interesting to look back and go, what were we concerned about with certain players? Because we forget, we we just create new questions. Mm -hmm. We go, you know, but but can they do that? But can they do that? But can they do it? And we, we sort of look back and we sort of almost forget what questions we asked of players that they've already now answered and they are beginning to answer. And it's the same with the team. And you go, you know, well, you look back on, you know, are we... Are we physically at the level? We've answered that. We've now answered those questions. No one no one asked the question, are Arsenal physically at the level? We asked the question, you know, can we go out there and perform in those big games, those big nights? Call this, you could call this a big, big game or not, but it felt like a big game to me. And we look at our record in the big games this season, whichever you want to pick it. City, win Community Shield, win at home. Obviously, we're yet to play them at the Etihad. Liverpool, win at home, draw away at Anfield. It wasn't, that wasn't too bad. All the questions that are being asked about this team we're beginning, we've, we almost forget about them and ask new ones, but we forget the ones that we used to ask. And that's what's the most exciting part. We feel like we've mature, matured, evolved, as I say, but you know, whether it's Arteta, his use of substitutions or can he adapt his football or whatever, all those questions are being answered. We're having to come up with new questions. Well, we're coming that's to ask what's if, so if, if we're celebrating too much, like we've got, and yeah. I, I mean that a little. I saw, I, I'm sorry to go, I saw someone saying, oh, Arsenal fans have, have taken chance from other teams. And I go, if that's the criticism, if our level of criticism has come to, we're nicking chance, which we're not, by the way, um, when people are nicking stuff off us. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. It's a chance. Who cares? Um, if that's the level, that tells you something. I do it a little bit tongue in cheek, but I'll be honest with you. I kind of answer that question because that is the level that we're looking at. Like we're looking at the margins being so perfect now. It's not even just small. Like this team is performing. Um, and I, I do want to go to the counter press because I think it's, it's kind of an example of what we've been talking about this pod where I just think that there's an icy cool composure to Arsenal in what they do. There isn't, um, I don't think I'm seeing patterns of play or any technical specifics that we haven't seen as fundamentals throughout Arteta's tenure. In terms of the press, this man-to-man -man press, the shadow cover, look, when the ball moves to the right, make sure you do, we call it a banana run from the striker to force play to one side, then Bakayo mm -hmm. helps to support the opposition fullback. But at the same time, our fullback, our right center back and our right midfielder press into a kind of... 1v1, but also they cheat to the ball side. This, these are all aspects that we've seen before. But it's that it's that that intensity that you bring in the support for the shadow cover. That's what's different because you need to sell. You need to sell. We'll come on to Gabriel later, but yeah, yeah, this is sort of I imagine you're referring to. Yes, and you need to sell that to a team because otherwise they won't play in the spaces that you're you're guiding them to play. And, and, you know, it's not as though that Newcastle didn't try to go long over the top. They did. They could absolutely see that there was issues with it. But then they got frustrated because if they went over the top, we had Gabrielle, Saliba, Ben White. That aerial presence meant that you couldn't go over the top of us. So then the team was like, okay, how do I play through this match? And again, 
I think Declan Rice's usage a little bit higher up, which is what Jorginho allows in that presence, is really significant to allowing us to have that athletic running power to shift in the middle. Because it's not just the intensity to meet to your marker, it's the intensity to meet to where you think the ball will go. Mm. And by cutting that off, you cause indecision on the person on the ball. So it's not just what you're seeing in terms of that really fun tackle meeting the marker, mm -hmm. but it's the work that's being done off the ball to close yes. off angles and force them into saying, okay, where I wanted to play is no longer open. Let me switch somewhere else. Mm. And that delay is, I think, what was really impressive last night. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Yeah, Saturday night. Um, Saturday, yeah, yeah the, <laughs> no, I was like, was it last? Oh no, it's Saturday. Night. It does feel like it was. Yeah, yesterday. Um, yeah, the uh, and on that also that that off the ball work. I don't know if you watched uh, Jesse Marsh's uh, Monday Night Football of course. Um, managerial uh, job interview. I mean uh, appearance. Um, <laughs> but the yeah the, the 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 part where you were talking about the net the the, the Leipzig net and I appreciate it, it's slightly different but the concepts of the um, maybe this is something we could go over on the tactical stuff the on the tactical A to Z the maximal minimal width thing and about being in a position where when you're in possession you are you're not so wide that you're covering too much of the pitch that you're causing issues in passing angles and you're not available and you're making the pitch too wide and you're not too close that you're yes you maybe feel like you're more more congested and you could you could counter press quicker but you're then cutting off the passing angles and cutting off the passing lanes in a different way are uh, I love I love that and I think you could take any screenshot of Arsenal at Newcastle the night and you watch you know whether it's Jorginho, Rice, Saka, White, anyone when we're in possession the work that's being done off the ball to be in a position to both counter press and step in if the ball is turned over but also to be able to receive in, in in good positions and play forward as well that constant negotiation between where we could lose the ball or I could be available to to go forward or whatever is you know again it's just another aspect and another what I was referring to earlier another um thing on the to-do list that Mikel seems to have mastered which is just yeah it's it's extraordinary um I want to talk about the uh individuals a little bit and I want to come to Gabrielle um and I I tweeted out something like um at what point do we stop calling him Saliba's mate mm. and start saying he is one of the best defenders in the world Gabrielle I thought the other night I think his best his best aspect might have been his passing, which you you obviously you don't necessarily associate with Gabriel at all times because you know the, the quality in the team and because maybe what his his absolute strengths are maybe the more obvious strengths, but those fizzed balls into midfield, those switches to some degree, or the, or the some of the part the sort of crossfield passes into Erdegaard, some of the balls down the line to Kivior, forget the defensive stuff. His on ball quality. We really underrate. And I thought, you know, then, then you add in how high he, he can win it for you, how many times he can anticipate what the, where the ball's going to go, the fact that you are just not getting past him on the, on the outside, how, def, how secure he is in the air defensively. This guy's a monster. He is an he's a old monstro, as we would say. He's unbelievable. Thanks for checking out the Canon Podcast. To hear the full episode, sign up as a YouTube member on this channel or go to patreon.com forward slash the Canon Pod.